Hey, what's going on guys? It's Matt back with another video. Today I'm doing my short-term review of the Fujifilm X-H2S, which is just an absolute beast of a camera, I have to say off the bat. I've had it for about four months. I've put it through its paces in terms of professional work and using it for my personal work. It's my everyday camera. It's what I use for absolutely everything, whether it's photography or videography. It does both exceptionally well. I used to own two Fujifilm X-T3s, which I used for all of my professional work, whether it was photo or video. I had to sell one of those X-T3s in order to fund this X-H2S. And now, if I can help it, I just use this X-H2S for any of my work. It's just that much better than the X-T3. The X-T3 is still also a beast of the camera, but with the, the new processor and the new sensor, there's noticeably more dynamic range in both photo and video. The raw files and photo are more pushable in terms of highlight recovery and shadow recovery. And also video files are just so good. It has even better video formats, obviously at the expense of more storage and everything that comes along with that, bigger files, but um, it's really, really great. And uh, the autofocus is a lot better than the X-T3, a lot more reliable, especially in a professional context with human face tracking, which what I'm using most of the time because most of my work entails either photos or videos of people like at, at an event or portrait photography, whatever. But yeah, this is just perfect for that. This is just, I love the colors out of it. I barely have to edit photos very much, just using the the regular film simulation profiles on my raw files. I'm able to just to do a lot with that. And honestly, just Provia is just a perfect natural look for the most part. I'm not trying to go for any crazy stylized colors. And uh, I have phantom LUTs for my F-Log2 footage I use for my videos. I got the phantom LUTs with the Ari Alexa kind of looks and they're just beautiful. That's probably what I'm using on this video right now. This camera's really great, especially for me who doesn't necessarily specialize in color grading, but still wants to learn and, and can increase my latitude in that. I can spend the next 10 years just honing my photography and videography skills. And this, I'm never gonna really outgrow this camera. It has everything I'm gonna need outside of just literally needing like a cinema camera or like a medium format camera for like huge res resolution or something. This can cover like 99%, it's like a jack of all trades and a master of honestly most of them. <laughs> but anyway, that's enough gushing. Let's talk about actual tangible things about this camera that make it good. In terms of physical aspects, the build quality is, is a lot better than the X-T3. You can just feel each button has just like better resistance and it, it just feels like it's gonna to hold up for a long time. The shutter is rated for 500,000 actuations, but uh, the sensor readout is actually so fast and the processing in the camera is so fast that I actually have it in electronic shutter. So honestly, I can use this for Honestly, I, I don't even know how long, years and years and years. I know the shutter's never gonna go out, but you know, I'm. it just feels like it's built to last. It feels like it's gonna last a long time. And it's bringing new life into old Fujifilm lenses that were known to not have very good autofocus. Like for example, right now I'm using the old XF23 F1.4 at F2 to shoot this. And I mean, the autofocus, like it still has the old stepper motors, but being driven by the new processing in this camera and just the autofocusing algorithm and the X-H2S, it is so much better than you were ever able to get out of it before. And like I said, it breathes new life into those old Fujifilm lenses. Not only does it feel better in the hand, the grip is better and it just has better build quality than the X-T3, but the battery life is also significantly better. It has the new Fujifilm, I don't even know the actual name of the battery, but whatever they had starting in the X-T4 and the Fujifilm GFX cameras, everything uh, ever since then in terms of the really high-end cameras, this has like, it feels like, like three times better battery life than the X-T3. Um, not only is the battery better, but the camera's just more efficient in terms of using the battery because it has AI algorithms and all this different crazy stuff in it. So it's just, it's just more efficient, faster, better, stronger, sleeker. It's like Terminator 2 or whichever Terminator it is where there's the new Terminator that is like just better in every way. It's the new model. Arnold Schwarzenegger is like the X-T3 and the X-H2S is like the new Terminator that's just better in every way. Um, the X-T3 can still get the job done. Still, still also a beast, but the X-H2S is just a little bit badder, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I enjoy the fact that there's a CF Express card slot in the X-H2S. I do not enjoy how expensive good CF Express cards are to put in that slot, but once you make that investment, it opens up 
a whole bunch of new features in terms of video codecs and basically never ending buffer in photo bursts. So in 40 frames a second photos, crazy, just crazy things in terms of speed are opened up possibilities a whole new world is just opened up whenever you start using cf express cards in this camera and you can also use a uhs2 sd card as a backup for either proxy files for video or even just a backup for for photos for me in terms of usability on the xt3 i actually never got into the habit of using the top dials for iso and shutter speed i ended up just using the front and rear wheel dials right under the the shutter button so moving over to this xh2s once there was the firmware update to map iso to the front command dial it was just like using my X-T3 in the way that I used to use my X-T3. I never really missed the, the top dials. I like how the X-T3 looks aesthetically, but in terms of actual functionality and professional use, I don't absolutely need that look. And I really, the, the top dials are actually slow you down in a lot of ways. And that's fun for your own personal photography. For the way I use this X-H2S, I just use it for everything. And I just needed a workhorse camera, so I don't necessarily like I, like I said, I never use the top dials anyway, so I don't really miss those on this camera. And the seven command dials were a little bit of a learning curve because that wasn't something I used to have on my X-T3, but once I started using them, command one I have set to regular 4K uh, 16 by nine, command two I have it to 6.2K open gate, command three I have it in 60 frames, command four I have 120 frames video, and the command five through seven I have for my photography, one is just regular single shot photography and the other two are different bursts, one for people, one for animals. And yeah, having those seven custom modes are super usable and it, you can quickly just go between settings so fast instead of having having to go into your menu, 60 frames a second, okay, and I have to change my, my shutter speed to be double the frame rate, and then I, yeah, like, instead of having to worry about that, you literally just go click, command two, and you're ready to go. It's super useful, especially in a professional context, and uh, it didn't take a lot to get used to, and I'm really, really happy with it now, and going back to the X-T3, I do notice that it is clunky having to input certain settings going back and forth between different shooting modes. I also invested in a battery grip for this, and I don't even think that is at all necessary with how good the battery life in, is in the X-H2S, but I do enjoy the, the grip on the camera feeling even better, having that little bit of extra room for the pinky to go down. And the battery grip, even though it makes the camera pretty big and heavy for what it is considering it's an APS-C size sensor, it's really nice just to have to be able to hold it just upright like this to do portrait photography. The IBIS in this X-H2S is very nice. Now, I obviously coming from an X-T3 and never owning any other Fujifilm or any camera with IBIS for that matter. Obviously, I don't have really a good frame of reference in terms of quality of IBIS, but I know this is really good and I heard good things from people who used to have the X-T4 in terms of this just ironing out some background wobbles and different things like that. It's very usable to me. For the most part, I'm not shooting handheld footage if I'm not using also a stabilized zoom lens. Even with like my Fujifilm 33 f1.4, which obviously doesn't have stabilization, the IBIS takes control for that and the footage is really nice even handheld right out of camera. A huge upgrade coming from the X-T3 as a video shooter is the full-size HDMI port in this X-H2S. Super useful, absolutely love it. I don't need those cheap little micro HDMIs that break and have to invest in three of those every single year. Full-size HDMI is, is just really awesome to have as a video shooter. If you upgraded from the X-T4 to the X-H2S, you will be happy to know that the X-H2S has both a headphone jack and a 3.5 millimeter mic jack, but if you came from the X-T3, that actually had both. For some reason, the X-T4, they opted to make the headphone jack a USB-C thing, and you needed, you needed like an adapter. That was really stupid, but the X-T3 had both, and this has both. Both are very useful. It's really nice to be able to have a mic plugged in and then to be able to monitor your audio without needing an adapter. And another minor change between this and the X-T3 that some people were complaining about is that the autofocus mode switch on the front of the camera is no longer a switch, it's actually a button that goes into a little three selection menu. That doesn't really bother me. Um, I didn't find that functionally it was it was that different and I think you can also now map that to another custom button so I think having that customizability kind of outweighs having that switch like I understand people like 
people like things and it, people don't like change, but it's like, it's really not that big of a deal. <laughs> okay, so now in terms of autofocus, as I have already mentioned, it is just miles ahead of the X-T3 in terms of tracking focus, especially with the new linear motor primes, like the 33 millimeter. And also I think that there's linear motors, I'm 99% sure there's linear motors in the 50 to 140. Like the tracking in those lenses is very good. Those are really the lenses I would use for tracking or just any new Fujifilm Prime. Like this 23 1.4, the tracking still isn't gonna be perfect. It's gonna be a lot better than it was on the old cameras, but yeah, like I said, it breathes new life into it, especially video autofocus is so, so much more reliable than the X-T3. And uh, even when there's a bunch of people, like I, I got some footage at a quinceanera, I've already shown this in my 33 millimeter f1.4 video, but the 33 was attached to this camera at that time. And that's what dr drove the autofocus to be so good. And like a, it was shot at f1.4 and like a really lot, lots moving environment. It could be a very confusing situation for autofocus and it performed very, very well. So. I'm using this for professional work or music to shoot music videos, as you'll see right here, ads, social media content, all that kind of stuff. It is just absolutely stellar and the autofocus is reliable. I've never owned a Sony camera, but it's getting pretty close to what I imagine Sony autofocus is. Now in terms of photo image quality, the sensor does have the same amount of megapixels as the Fujifilm X-T3, but for whatever reason, if you are pixel peeping. I do think you notice more resolution on the X-H2S. And just a quick side tangent, I've been using uh, DxO Photo Raw 3 or whatever it's called. And I, I've been using that to process my RAWs into DNGs to put into Lightroom because I really just don't like how Lightroom processes Fujifilm RAW files. And it just breathes new life into the files in terms of low light noise looking so much better and not having the warming artifacts and getting more sharpness out of the file without actually adding sharpness just in terms of how it interprets the raw file just having more sharpness and more detail naturally there instead of being added as sharpness after the fact in post um, DxO is just really really good I'm not even sponsored by them but I've been noticing a huge increase in quality of my files but even even so X-T3 files and X-H2S files both processed through that and improving the quality of them, I still noticed that the X-H2S files are just a tad bit sharper for whatever reason, even though this is the same amount of megapixels. And there's also more latitude in terms of highlight recovery and shadow recovery, which is more important to me than the actual sharpness of the file. It's always plenty sharp, 26 megapixels is fine. But um, having that dynamic range is what's really nice about this and what actually makes it hard to go back to shooting the X-T3 because I'm noticing I can't recover the shadows as much and I can't recover the highlights as much and it just makes it a little bit annoying to use. Also F-Log2 in terms of video image quality opens up a lot more dynamic range with 14 stops of usable dynamic range or there maybe 13 stops or whatever in the real world if you're not looking at a test chart or whatever more dynamic range that is mostly available for consumer cameras on the market is the point. Very usable, a little bit noisy, easy to be uh, obviously cleaned up in post, but super, super beautiful files. I'm using F-Log2 right now, as you can see. Also, the video output doesn't seem as digitally sharp. I don't know how to explain it because I, I did shoot some short films on the X-T3 and I couldn't help but feel that Especially for some reason it was noticeable on wide shots where everything was in focus anyway because I was at a deep depth of field and I wanted everything to be in focus. The X-T3 footage, 300, 250 megabits per second, 4K, H.265, for some reason the video just, it just looked really kind of like digitally sharp, maybe in an artificial way. And I don't necessarily notice that as much with the X-H2S. The footage isn't like soft in terms of lacking detail, but it doesn't see, it seems more organically sharp. It doesn't feel like digitally sharp. And that's just something like I noticed that the, I don't, for lack of a better word, the footage is more cinematic out of the X-H2S versus the X-T3. But anyway, that is basically my thoughts and my short term review of the X-H2S. It seems like honestly, after this much use out of it in terms of professional and personal use, this might end up being also my long-term review. I don't think my thoughts were gonna really dramatically change on this in another year or so. Um, it's just really good at what it does. It's a lot better than the X-T3. It's the best thing Fujifilm has to this point. So maybe looking back at this whenever the X-H3 comes out and seeing how much better that is and then taking a, a point, a look back at it. But at this point, the X-H2S is like honestly one of the best cameras on the market 
period in terms of hybrid use in both for photos and videos. There are things that do photos better that are photo centric and there's things that do video better that are video centric, but they're both more expensive and the systems are more expensive, the lenses and everything are more expensive. So in terms of overall value as a hybrid creator, both professionally for social media and personally, the X-H2S, I can't recommend it enough. I love it. I'm not sponsored by Fujifilm, but obviously I've been a long time user of Fujifilm. I've owned a lot of their lenses and cameras and gotta say this is just by far the best one that I've ever used. <laughs> I definitely wanna try one of the new 40 megapixel Fuji uh, cameras, but I don't think that's really necessarily high on my radar. I don't really need that resolution and extra file size for my workflow, but I've talked for quite a while. I hope I can edit it this, this down to something that's very watchable for you, and I hope you got some information out of this, and I hope you learned something, and you learned something about the X-H2S, or you reaffirmed your purchase of the X-H2S, or whatever reason you clicked on this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment down below. Start a conversation. What do you think of yours? What camera do you think's better? Do you think the X-H2S is awful? Whatever. Don't start an argument in the comments, but let's have a conversation, and I'd love that. And uh, that's all. Thanks for watching. Peace, guys.